looking good. Poor baby, looking good. Is Dave on? I think so. Uh, is Dave here? I'm always. Hey! What? It's Saturday night! Oh, I forgot! Saturday night live at Calvary Chapel La Mesa. Amen! We are ready to worship the Lord. You know, we can get our spiritual tank so empty. We need to get it refilled every day. Jesus, and uh, fill it up, Jesus. Refresh amen. us, renew us, make us more like you. Amen? Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, just fill this place with your presence. May your Holy Spirit just come upon us, Lord. God, we thank you for your word, that it's living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. It speaks right to our hearts, dividing the bone and the marrow, Lord. God, you are the living God same yesterday today and forever and you want a relationship with your creation God so often we worship the creation instead of the creator God just uh, show us we don't need more money we need more of you more love more power more of you in our lives so be here tonight. Be here tonight. Fill this sanctuary, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. Let's worship the Lord. I
name. Praise his name. Amen. Okay. Uh, the Holy Spirit rushes in with great power. And he renews and transforms us. Then the Holy Spirit gently calms us down <laughs> with quiet contentment. And then the Holy Spirit rushes in with great power. <laughs> he renews and restores us, and then He gently calms us down with quiet contentment. And then the Holy Spirit rushes in with power, and He renews and transforms us. And then He quiets us down, gently calms us down with sweet contentment. Amen. The kingdom of God is within you. Amen.
this to the Lord.
of God and leave the same. We just can't. It reminds us of how unholy we are and unworthy we are. And because of the blood of Jesus that covers us, we get access to the throne room to worship at the feet of the King of Kings. He alone did the work and he alone is worthy of our praise. If you want to know the power of God, get down at Jesus' feet. If you want to know the power of God, get down at Jesus' feet. Get down. 
If you want to know the love of God. Well, the best place to be is down at Jesus' feet. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the best place to be. So the band's going to sit down, and we're going to have our In God's Word. Take out your Bibles. Take out your Bibles. And you should all have sermon notes, okay? Make sure you have the sermon notes as we get into God's Word tonight. Um, there are some flyers in the back there that I want you to take a look at. Uh, we're going to be starting some special luncheons. Uh, eventually we'll cover everybody, but um, so the first one is going to be for the seniors of our church. Anyone over 60, okay? A lot of people over 60. There's a flyer back there for you, and uh, we want you to join us for a luncheon on November 14th right here at the church at 12 noon. And it would be an honor if you guys could come and get to know some of the church leaders and uh, have fellowship together. So that'll be the first group. And then we will go on to singles and couples and, you know, we'll hit everybody once a month. We're going to take a look at this and, you know, just really become that family of God that God wants us to be. So that's uh, the first one. That flyer's back there. And then the other flyer about the movie night, you all know about that, October 29th, 6.30. Invite your friends to come to that. And uh, the food drive, food giveaway, next Saturday, okay? Next Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. And if any of you want to be servants and help us out, 
you can come here um, at 9 o'clock and uh, help set up the tables and pray for people and give out the food and all that stuff. So that's uh, this coming Saturday, 9 o'clock, if you want to help out. And, uh, you know, hopefully Patty's going to boost it and get it out to the community. And we have all those flyers from previous uh, food bank uh, stuff that we did. So, you know, over 400 families were blessed. And we're going to be going out to the uh, hitching post. Sounds like somebody getting married, right? <laughs> the hitching post, the trailer parks around the neighborhood as well. And uh, we're going to be giving out a lot of food. So... That's October 23rd from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Be here at 9 if you want to help out. Also, the Women's Bible Study. They just had a meeting, uh, the first part of the group. Uh, it was great. We're in our first chapter right now, so you can still join. You can still join. So the next one's October 28th. And uh, next week, uh, I put on a I, – I was looking at all this stuff, and I was going, let's make the weekly schedule simple. So I have a weekly schedule right here. They're in the back as well. Starting with Monday. We don't have anything going on Monday, so I said, Aww. invite a friend to dinner. <laughs> Show hospitality. Hallelujah, amen. Tuesday, Bible study, 6.30. Wednesday, prayer at 5. Evening Bible study at 6.30. Thursday, this coming week, men's Bible study. Prayer at 5, study at 6.30. Friday night. Coming up, Worship and Praise Night. Come and join us, 6.30. Uh, Saturday, food distribution, and then the Saturday evening service. So it's just a simple page back there. It's, put it all on one page for you. Do you have anything on Sunday? Uh, just a few things. Um, food giveaway. Give it to a friend that needs food. There's a lot of people that need food right now. You know, they didn't get the stimulus check, you know, starting in September, and so maybe they're you know hurting financially and uh, don't have enough money to buy food so put that on your calendar okay the book of acts here we go oh the men's bible study dates are all in this form and that's back there and that uh, printer was going through a lot this week acts i was just praying that really that god would fill us up our spiritual tanks because this is a crazy and evil world in which we live, isn't it? Double amen. Crazy and evil world. And But I want you to remember this. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Second verse, he's got you and me, brother, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Do you really believe that? He's got the whole world in his hands. He is working miracles. We wouldn't even recognize behind the scenes all the things that he's doing all the time. so in your bibles in acts chapter 7 this is where we left off last week and it's a great study for us because we are facing times of persecution as christians i don't think you know until the lord comes back he, he also uses persecution as a purification and it says many will fall away, maybe during that time of persecution that's coming. And in Acts chapter 7, I mean, it also says many people's love will grow cold. Grow cold, man, to get involved with all the different cares of the world and love of riches and love of money and all this other stuff. And their love starts to grow cold. Even during this time, you know, of two years now of isolation, you know, a lot of people, they say 40% that were coming to church before will never come back to church. That's amazing. Bring them back, boy. I mean, some are doing really good, you know, and but so many others, you know, just got involved with other things. Hey, Chargers are playing Sunday morning. <laughs> got to watch the Charger game, you know, 10 o'clock. 
you know, or the, the playoffs are taking place or, you know, youth football or youth soccer or whatever it may be. I mean, that's why it's great at our church. We have Saturday night services. But, you know, when I say to somebody, hey, if you can't make Sunday, that's okay. Come Saturday night. They give me this blank look and then they don't show up. But we also have Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights and Thursday nights and Friday nights. I mean, you name it. So there's plenty of opportunities to be in fellowship, to get in the word, to be in prayer. There's plenty of fellowship opportunities. And so in Acts chapter 6, we have persecution starting in the church. Acts is a great book of the movement of the church of God from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And God was going to use that persecution to take the gospel everywhere. And persecution it was there in the first century. It hasn't stopped since that time until, I mean, today, through today, 2021. It hasn't stopped. There's persecution going on all over the place. Jesus said to his disciples, he said this, you will be persecuted for my sake. Does it say if? You might be? No, it says what? You will be persecuted for my sake. You know, not because you're drunk or you're on meth or something else, but, you know, that you're serving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So... The disciples were going to be persecuted, and it starts right here when we get to Acts chapter 7. But did that stop them from preaching the gospel? No. Glory to God. No, it didn't stop them from preaching the gospel. <laughs> did they deny the truth about Jesus? No, of course not. Even when they were told by the authorities, stop talking about Jesus, stop preaching the gospel said, how could we stop? This is our life. Amen. And so Stephen was raised up as one of those servants in the church, taking care of the widows that were from the other countries. You know, it's kind of like the food ministry. He was faithful. He was reliable. He was courageous. He was dependable. I want to be like him when I grow up. Yes, Lord. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. He was full of God's spirit. You know, I mean, he defended the faith. He lived for Christ. Great example for us. And, uh, you know, when you look at history, I mean, he was the first martyr in history. Stephen was. And one of the people that were there at that particular time when they stoned him was a guy by the name of Saul. I think that testimony had a great influence upon what became the Apostle Paul. I know that's right. So in chapter 6, or chapter 7, verse 51, look at what Stephen called those that had rejected and killed almost every prophet, and, you know, including Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. And he says this, Acts chapter 7, this is where we left off, verse 51. You men are stiff-necked and uncircumcised. In your hearts and in your ears. And you're always, always resisting the Holy Spirit. You are doing just as your fathers did. They rejected God, their father, just like their physical fathers did before them. And then they killed almost every prophet that God was had sent their way. You know, um, stiff-necked, obstinate, uncircumcised in heart and ears. I mean, he didn't mince words, did he? Was he being politically correct here? No. You know... They had not been forgiven before God. Their hearts weren't right. They resisted the Holy Spirit. I mean, this, this, this is one of the great sermons in the Scriptures, Amen. apart from Jesus' sermons were, were just perfect. Verse 52. 
Which one of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And, and, and they killed those who had per previously announced the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have become. Talk it to them, brother. Wow, that's hitting them right between the eyes, Amen. isn't it? Talk it to them. I can remember playing baseball when I was in high school. I, was a, I played shortstop and I was a pitcher. And when I was playing shortstop one time, the, there was a guy running from first to second, <clears throat> and there was a pickoff. Or we were trying to get him out. So the catcher winds up, man, threw it about 100 miles an hour. The second baseman was supposed to cut it off, and I thought he was cutting it off. He didn't cut it off. He lowered his glove and hit me right square between the eyes. <coughs> that woke me up. Blood everywhere. <coughs> you know, it, yeah, it was definitely an ouch. Uh, <coughs> but I, when I was thinking about that, spiritually, Stephen was hitting him right between the eyes. He says, you killed those who announced the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have become. I mean, they tried to stone Moses. They put a, Isaiah into a dead tree trunk and then sawed him in half. <clears throat> they threw Jeremiah into dungeons several times before they finally stoned him to death. They killed Zechariah in the temple, they, and it just goes on and on. They killed these prophets that were proclaiming God's word, even Jesus. <clears throat> we got to get rid of Jesus. Verse 57. But they are... Uh, Verse 53, you who received the laws ordained by angels, and yet you did not keep it. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick, and they began gnashing their teeth at him. So here's Stephen, and he says, hey, you haven't kept the law. You know, he takes a bold stand, which was going to change history. God was using him. Can God use any person here in this room? He can Pour your spirit out. to be his mouthpiece, you. And so he kind of turned the tables on, on his accusers right here, and he convicted them of blasphemy. You have, you're trying to say, I committed blasphemy. You've committed blasphemy. And uh, thank God for his faith that he didn't back down. Verse 54. They were cut to the quick, and they began gnashing their teeth at him. But, I love it, so cut to the quick literally means, you know, like cut in half. They were just, God was preaching his word through Stephen, and God said to Stephen and all of us, be ready in season and out of season to preach the truth. Be ready. Be ready to give an answer of the hope that is within you. Isn't that what it says? And so Stephen's words just ripped apart their false spirituality. Amen. That's what God's words does. It rips apart false spirituality in us even today. Conviction of the Holy Spirit, right? Hallelujah. Now, they should have repented. They should have said, God, forgive us. We have sinned. God, just clean our hearts. Clean our minds. Set us free. Instead, they went on with their hypocritical lives, and instead of being broken in repentance, they began gnashing their teeth at Stephen, it says. Rage and frustration was Filling their their demeanor. I mean, it, their faces. And so, right here, I love this. Verse 57. Or no, verse 55. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven, and he saw the glory of God, Hallelujah. and Jesus, what? 
standing at the right hand of God. Stephen being full of the Holy Spirit. Turn back to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman who for 18 years had a sickness caused by a spirit. And she was bent double and could not straighten up at all. And when Jesus saw her, this is chapter 13. But it was pretty good. I like it. <laughs> He called her and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your sickness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he laid his hands upon her and immediately made her erect again and began glorifying God. Now go over to chapter 12. That was good. Chapter 12, verse 11. You know, by the way, Wednesday nights, man, Dan's going through the book of Acts, and it is mighty, so come and join us, 6.30 on Wednesday nights. Acts chapter 12, verse 11. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and authorities, do not become anxious about how or what you should speak in your defense or what you should say. This is Stephen. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you're to say. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit was giving him the words, and they were so powerful, and they were so mighty. It was such a great sermon that God gave to them. Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, make sure it's, man, it's for the name of Christ. That's right. Following Christ. <laughs> Not going 80 miles an hour in the freeway. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Glory to God. Because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon oh, you. Thank you. The spirit of glory and the spirit of God, the spirit of grace, the spirit of peace that God gives to so many that are persecuted for his sake, ending up in glory, even in their deaths, just like Stephen here. You know, that's what's going to happen. What did Paul say? Philippians 1, verse uh, 21. For me to live is what? And to die is what? Why is it gain? You get to be in the presence of the Lord, right? It's gain. But if God allows you to stay on this earth, then he says glorify him in everything that you do. In word or deed, glorify him. Everything you do. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. Therefore, Paul says, I am content with weaknesses, with insults, with distress, and with persecutions, and with difficulties. That's quite a list. We don't want any of those things, do we? God, I don't want, I don't want, you know, difficulties. I don't want, you know... All those things mentioned here. God, take them away from me, right? Take away the insults, the distresses, the persecutions, the difficulties. Then he says, for Christ's sake, when I am weak, what? I am strong. strong. And then go back up to verse 9. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Praise his name. Hallelujah. For power is perfected in weakness and so just like Stephen it says we are to boldly communicate Christ in all circumstances difficulties all those different things weaknesses persecutions distresses insults proclaim Christ represent Christ 
Let Christ shine through you Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he'll give you grace. He'll give you enough grace to face those circumstances, whatever they may be. Yes, and then he says, we are not victims. We are conquerors. We are victorious through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. So go back to Acts chapter, chapter 7, verse 55. I love the book of Acts. Uh, of course, if you've been here long enough, you'll know I say that about every book I go through. <laughs> Acts chapter 7, verse 55. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven. Who else was able to go into the heavenly scenes? Well, who in the New Testament? Apostle John. He was able to get a glimpse of things that were going on in heavenly places, right? Amen. It's interesting because here it says Jesus was what? Standing at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. He's standing. You know, most of the time in Scripture, it, it says that Jesus is sitting, right, at the right hand of God. Yeah. Now he's standing. Yeah. I was wondering, why is he standing? Why is he seeing this? this why is he seeing Jesus standing? And I think it's because Jesus was about ready to welcome Stephen into his heavenly home that he has prepared for all of us. He says, I've gone to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. Some of us have little dinky huts in heaven. Some of us, our mansions are a little bigger, a little bigger. God's got a lot of great things for us. Amen. You know, he says, hey, live for me. Man, I hope you have many stars waiting for you in heaven, many crowns and stars. In the name of Jesus. You know, where he'll say to you, well done, Hallelujah. good and faithful servant. Your spirit out, Lord. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You've been faithful in little things. I'm going to put you in charge of Glory many things. So here he is. He's stepping into that heavenly kingdom. And I don't think, I think Jesus was probably just couldn't wait to see his faithful servant, Stephen. It says in verse 56, he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. There's many martyrs in our society today that we hear nothing about. Christians all over the world being martyred for their faith. God bless them all. Hallelujah. And if you stand up for Jesus, stand up for his word today, uh, you, can be, you could be considered a hate monger. You know, just because God's word says a lot of things about our evil in our society today. And he says about who's going to get into heaven and who isn't going to get into heaven. Verse 56, he says, heaven's opened up. There was Jesus standing there at the right hand of God. Verse 57, and then they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears. Just like today, we don't want to hear that Christian stuff. We don't want to hear what the Bible says. You know, covering their ears. You know, I don't know if, if you've ever, as a kid, you know, <laughs> you were going off, you were saying things, and maybe your other brother or sisters put their hands in their ears and go, nah, 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 I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And that's what they were saying. I mean, it, hey, I can't hear you. And uh, they continued the tradition of their fathers who killed the prophets that were proclaiming God's word. I know that's right. Now they're going to kill Stephen, another of God's messengers. And uh, they rejected their Messiah. They killed their Messiah. It's not surprising that they would reject Stephen, one of the faithful heralds of God's word. It says they ran at Stephen. We've seen examples of that today in our society. You know, frenzied mobs. 
you know, running in and just stealing things, whatever they want from supermarkets and burning down banks right here in La Mesa and all kinds of things. Setting aside all dignity, all goodness, you know, and having no self-control. And it's the same thing that was going on here in Acts chapter 7. The, the highest court in Israel, the Sanhedrin, the chief priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're, they're, they're just going crazy at what Stephen said. And they are becoming a howling, murderous mob. You know, it says, you are like your father, Satan, doing the desires of Satan, doing your desires. In verse 58, and when they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses lay aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Here he comes. Hallelujah. Now remember, Saul was a persecutor of the church. That's what he says. And this is the first appearance in Scripture of Saul, who became the Apostle Paul. And he, from Acts chapter 13 until the end of the book of Acts... He was the dominant figure. And then in the rest of the New Testament, all the books that he was inspired by God to give us for our encouragement and exhortation and training and living unto righteousness. So Stephen's prayer was answered. It says in verse 59, And they went on stoning Stephen as he called upon the Lord and said, Jesus Receive my spirit. And to be absent from the body as a Christian is to be in the presence of the Lord. For me to live as Christ and to die is gain. And so instantly he was going to be in the presence of the Lord as God's faithful servant. Are we ready? I mean, we, we might say yes, but are we really ready? To go before the righteous judge, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Blood of Jesus, blood of the Lamb. Have we confessed our sin? Blood of Jesus. Have we asked forgiveness? Worthy is the Lamb. Have we God. been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Look what he did in verse 60. Such a similarity between Jesus on the cross, who Stephen probably saw when Jesus was dying on the cross. It says, and falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this against them. Praise the Lord. And having Hallelujah. said that, he fell asleep. He died. You know what he's doing? He's pleading for God's forgiveness on the behalf of his executioners. It's incredible. He's praying for their salvation. What a what a great example Amen. of offering forgiveness to someone. Amen. Thank you. Just like Jesus did. The yeah. sacrifice of Jesus for our sins. Amen. I, I saw this and I'm going, wow. Yeah. wow. Jesus prayed for his enemies. Hallelujah. Just like Stephen is praying for his enemies. The Forgive them. They know not what they Blessed do. More than likely, I don't know. Paul's observing all this. And I wonder if Stephen wouldn't have prayed that prayer where everybody could hear it, if that would have changed something about Paul later on. Amen. But he's Amen. seeing this example Thank here. Amen. Uh, there's another chorus we sing. More love. More power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. How's the rest of it go? You with all of my strength, I will worship you with all my strength, my strength for you are my God, you are my God, 
more love, more power, more of you in my life. Less of my selfishness, less of my pride, but more of Jesus and his humility who went to the cross, the point of death for us, for our forgiveness of sins. Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. So here is Stephen. So many similarities. Stephen was so much like Jesus, his Lord. Jesus was filled with the Spirit, so was Stephen. Jesus was full of grace, so was Stephen. Jesus boldly confronted the religious establishment of his day, so did Stephen. Jesus had a mock trial, so did Stephen. Jesus was executed, though innocent of his crime, so was Stephen. Both were accused of blasphemy by false witnesses. Both of them died outside the city and were buried by sympathizers. And, I mean, as we already noted, both prayed for the salvation of their executors. Stephen, so much like Jesus. He had the mind of Christ. And there's the Sanhedrin. They heard the truth. They had the teaching of Jesus over and over again in the temple. They had all the witnesses of all the miracles that Jesus did. Then they heard the preaching of the apostles, Peter and John. And and then they had the preaching of Stephen. And then they saw the miracles that the apostles performed by the name of Jesus. And they still continued in their rejection and rebellion. And people do that same thing today. They were filled with rage. They gnashed their teeth. I think they're gnashing their teeth in hell today. Because it says in hell there will be gnashing of teeth, wailing, outer darkness, crying out for just that someone would just touch them with a little drop of water. A lot of people say hell and Hades aren't real. Heaven isn't real. Hades isn't real. Hell isn't real. It's another word for Hades. One day they'll know it's real if they reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Haven. Even Jesus described hell as gnashing of teeth. Just a couple more minutes. Turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 41. And the Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has an ear, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid, and from joy over it he goes and sells all that he has, and he buys that field. And then he, he goes on with what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. Turn to First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Amen. Set him apart. That's what the word sanctify means. Set him apart as Lord in your hearts. Always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account of the hope that is within you. Yet with gentleness and reverence and keep a good conscience. Yes. So that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Amen. Look at the bottom of your outline. Amen. 
Bottom of your outline. Are you ready to make a defense of the hope that is within you every day, in season and out of season? In season and out. You know, we, we're, we're right now in the playoffs, the baseball playoffs. You know, the baseball game's going on today, and, you know, they'll continue for a long time. But eventually there's going to be a World Series champion. Do you think all the teams, I don't even remember how many teams there are, 30-something, but do you think those players just stop practicing once they're done? No, no they're, uh, what is it, the, the uh, Winter League or in, Arizona, in Phoenix or whatever, spring training starts pretty soon after the end. Why? Because they're getting ready for the season. It's like being ready in season and out of season. And God Amen. says to us, be ready to preach the gospel, to be a good newser in season and out of season. Where are you going to spend eternity? Ask the question. Have you accepted God's forgiveness of your sins? Have you offered forgiveness? Here's a good one. Have you offered forgiveness to others who might have hurt or wounded you? Have you made, you know, an attempt to make it right? You know, to be a peacemaker? I mean, that's a good question, right? Or you should go, oh, no, I want to be mad at him forever. <laughs> Thank God that he wasn't mad at us. So how many times does he say to forgive one another? Keep forgiving. Seven times 70. Don't stop when it's 489. That's a good word. Amen. You just keep forgiving and asking forgiveness. Ask for healing. Maybe there's someone that you need to go to and ask forgiveness to be set free. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 says, we are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body is to be home with the Lord. Then he says this, Therefore, we have as our ambition, whether at home or absent, whether here or there, to be pleasing to Jesus. To be pleasing to Jesus. Lord, I pray for our, our church, God. These brothers and sisters in the Lord, that we would be on fire for you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That we would be good newsers, that we'd share our faith. I want a revival in my soul, Lord. Send down your spirit, send down the gospel rain. I want a revival in my soul. Hopefully we can say, I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. <laughs> I want you to be in control of my life. I want you to reign. Lord, get rid of all that pride and selfishness and envy and strife. Murder in our hearts and our minds. God, we humbly ask your forgiveness. We ask for your healing. Lord, that we would also do that with our brothers and sisters. We continue to pray for them. Lift them up to you, Lord. Maybe there's someone that you're bringing to our mind that we need to go and ask forgiveness. Be set free to be at peace. Peace with our brother and sister and peace with you, Lord. Set us free. Send this church, Lord, to be your instruments yes, Lord. of righteousness. Raise your people, Lord Jesus. That this church would want a revival in our souls. Yes, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit. Convict us of sin. Teach us. Lead us to righteousness. Fill us with your Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Lord, that we would have that desire to get into your word, to get into prayer, to be in fellowship. Satan is working overtime in these last days. Be 
He's a thief. He's a liar. He's the father of all lies. Yes, Lord, reveal the blood of the Lamb. Lord, it says to be aware of his schemes. Don't be ignorant of the things that he's doing. So know your word. Put your word into practice. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. As our heads are bowed, if God's been showing you some areas of sin in your life that you need to ask God's forgiveness, Lord, just raise free. your hand right now. Lord, set us free, Lord Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Lord, you see all those hands, God. We ask your forgiveness. We ask for your healing. Lord, forgive. Break Lord, the chains. Touch and heal. Hallelujah. Break the chains. Chains, Jesus. Set your people free. Touch us, Lord. We want to be more like you, like Stephen was, like Paul was, like the disciples were, like millions have been since that first century we want to be more like you have the mind of christ it says more power. set your mind on things above and not things of this earth we want the mind of christ we love you we praise you tonight lord thank you for your working that's taking place in this body yes lord move you started to work in every person i know you have every person here in this room you started to work Continue that work, Lord. It in the name of Some of us have become stiff-necked and rebellious. But there's a reason we're here tonight. God's not done with us yet. Hallelujah. He's not finished with us. Complete your work, Lord Jesus. He's still maturing us. Being here tonight is a divine appointment from you, Lord love you tonight. Let's all stand. Behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call so lift your Behold me
There's no God like Jehovah. 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 no God like Jehovah. He is the true and living God. And um, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. The fool. There's a lot of fools in our world today. It says they worship creation rather than the creator. Don't do it that way. There's countries all over the world that worship creation. Even in Egypt, those ten plagues were against false gods that they had set up. You know, I was reading this thing about China in the year 2020. There, it was a great festival all over China when they were worshiping. I think it was the frog or something. I can't what was it? The rabbit? You're the frog. And they had all these ceremonies to worship the frogs. And it's interesting that right then was the plague, the virus, whether you believe it was from Wuhan or whatever, started in China. And uh, I think Billy Graham said, if God doesn't bring judgment against America for our sins, he needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Our sins are so much greater. The abortion and everything else that's going on. So Trina, come on up here. I want you to stand right there. And uh, come on over. Trina wants to dedicate Eris to the Lord. And uh, her name stands for what? heir of the king heir of Jesus and it says in the scriptures where can I go from thy spirit where can I flee from thy presence if I ascend to heaven thou art there if I make my bed and shield behold thou art there if I take the winds of the dawn if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea even there thy hand will lead me thy right hand will lay hold of me for thou dost for my inward parts thou dost weave me in my mother's womb I will give thanks for to thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are thy works, and my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from thee when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Thine eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written. The days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. You know, Trina had a, an option. I can get rid of this baby, 
I can abort it. I can have nothing to do with it anymore. It's going to be a trial. There's going to be things that, you know, in the selfishness, we could say, hey, I don't need this. I don't need this baby or mass of tissue. Or we can say, no, that child in the womb was created by God. Praise and glorify the name of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Skillfully and wonderfully made. So she wanted to have a dedication tonight dedicated. Have you seen that baby look at you? It's amazing. And we're all part of that. We're all part of helping. And encouraging her. And uh, it's tough being a single mom raising a child. Hello, sweetie. So we want to say a prayer. We want to lay hands on them. So Dan, if you will just bless her and lay your hands on her and pray for her. And then Patty and Steph and Deborah, if you can just pray for Trina. Let's uh, join in prayer. Thank you. 
God, we ask your blessing upon every child that comes to this church, Lord. God, so many are like the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter. The statistics are horrible about once they graduate from high school and go to colleges, Lord, that are spewing out all kinds of godless philosophies, doctrines of men. Bring them back. Their only hope is Jesus. May they fill their minds with your word, Lord. We thank you, God, for these little ones. Lord, it says, build them up in the ways of the Lord. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. But they would come back to you, Lord, in that training that they had as kids. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. That's what your word says. Unless the Lord builds the house. That you would build the house of this young girl here, Lord, and her mom, and, and the church body, and Sunday school teachers, and Sunday school kids that come on Sunday mornings, Lord. Help all of us return to our first love. Return to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Bless them, Lord. Bless them as they go out into this evil and perverse generation in which we live. Fill them with your spirit like you filled Stephen, Lord. Give them wisdom as you gave Stephen wisdom. May we be your mouthpieces of the good news wherever we go. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. We'd also uh, like to give you this Bible for her, my God loves me, baby Bible. And we'd also like to give you this quilt. This is for her. Wrap her up nicely. God bless you. There's food in the back. Help yourselves. A lot of good bread over there. We'll see you during the week. God bless.